Let's get straight into the headlines, man. What do you want to hit first? Are we talking ENS? Sure. Let's talk about the ENS. And yeah, I mean, if you hear me also a little bit weird, I'm in the middle of the jungle. So please bear with me. Um, and let us know in the chat if I'm if I have, I'm having any sound problem. Uh, internet in the jungle is not that easy. <laughs> so um, ENS. So ENS has passed or is passing at the moment. Uh, the vote ends today. A very interesting proposal, which is basically to transfer ENS treasury and contact and contract ownership to the DAO. Um, they explain a little bit on a TLDR on the snapshot. They also have a forum post dedicated to it. Uh, mainly people will uh, or will be voting in four different actions. Uh, the first one, to transfer the control over the existing ENS treasury to the DAO. The second one, transferring the ownership of the ENS register controller and the pricing oracle to the DAO. The third one, transferring ownership of the ENS register to the DAO. And the last one, uh, transferring ownership of the DAO reverse namespace which basically governs assignment of primary ENS record to DAO. Uh, basically, the vote was uh, through approval voting, and they required that at least uh, all these four options have at least 50% support and 1% quorum when, uh, when voting ends. And here comes the funny part. Um, the funny part is that, uh, for example, um, Action number one, which is transferring control of the existing ENS treasury to the DAO, has 99.8% of approval. But when it comes to the other, uh, the rest of the three actions to take, they have 78, 77, and 76% of approval. Um, so people are not necessarily full into it, but I mean, there's, I mean, if it keeps like this, it will pass. So they, um, it will be approved. But so far, uh, on the forum uh, on the forum of VNS, there has been some very interesting conversation. Uh, the conversation has been around, for example, uh, we need more practical requirements. We need more details on these practical requirements. We need to know uh, what will happen with the price circle, um, timings, cadences. Like um, I felt, and I shared this with uh, T. Wells before the stream, that I felt it was really interesting because in this exercise of uh, moving to a DAO. You know, most of organizations have core teams and have different core teams dedicated to different things. So you have a core team of governance, you have a core team of exit development. And the interesting part of these core teams in a, in a normal organization is that information of the details get into the core teams. And that's not necessarily public. And when you move to a DAO, you need to make this detail public. And in the forum, uh, they were answering most of the questions, but in the initial proposal, these details were not explained through. So I felt that this is a very interesting exercise of awareness, of understanding that um, you need to be detailed. Even if your core team, everyone in the core team is aware of all the intricacies of whatever you're going to do, doesn't mean that the community knows. And you need to make an effort to let the community know uh, what you're going to do, because at the end, it's a doubt. So, you know, it's an interesting take on, on how you are doing this transition first the constitution that we covered on our first uh, headline news and now it's about these actions which comes about treasury management and 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 to the DAO. so what are your thoughts yeah no i i think this is a really interesting story here i mean the whole ens daoification um before i get into that folks i i want to welcome everybody in uh the stream here um, so if you're experiencing lag, I, we're, we're working out some of these kinks in the show. If you have any advice on how to reduce latency, um, please let us know. Um, I'm running as minimal things as I can on my system, but I'm also looking for a system upgrade here. I think I need more core. I need more cores. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna be able to stream hopefully better. But like, if there's any experts on the streaming side how to improve latency, please let me know. Reach out, DM, or drop a comment here. Um, also, a reminder to drop your OX, drop your ETH address if you want to be eligible for the NFB's uh, PFP airdrop. Um, so back to the ENS you know, story here, I think like, as you've said, it's, um, it's really interesting that we have a number of these centralized entities that are dowing it. And, and so whether it's Shapeshift, or whether it's ENS, observing how each of these previously centralized entities uh, accomplishes this task um, and like the speed with which they do it and the best practices are, are super, I mean, it's just really cool to be able to observe this and, and, and talk a bit about it. Um, you know, of course, the big news for ENS is is the transfer of the multi-sig, right? So obviously, 
you know, I, I don't, I can't speak to all the details either. Like I'm not as informed right. on a technical level. And so in some ways I'm happy to like defer that to, <laughs> to the folks that have been doing it well for, for, you know, as long as they have. Um, I think enabling the allocation of those uh, common pool of resources, um, you know, through the, the the governance process is super interesting though um so we're sort of seeing history being made here right <laughs> yeah 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 i mean I, there was a question that i really like um on 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 the forum in the proposal shout out to Dalon that if which is the person who who asked this question which was this is a this is essentially a symbolic first step then and this is very interesting because you know um People doesn't know. People doesn't know the repercussions of this. And someone asked, and this is a very valid question: Is this symbolic or this is actually real? Like, will it have? Like, what will it mean? Mm -hmm. um, what it actually will mean? And there was actually uh, an answer from Serenai in the forum, and basically she responded or he responded: uh, It's not just symbolic for the if namespace, uh, since that register contract is locked and cannot be changed even by the root. Um, so it's interesting when, you know, you have your own users sort of back and forth and trying to understand what's going on. Um, so I had this experience um, with someone I uh, I met last week about she she mentioned that she was airdrop 800 ENS and how it changed her life. You know, someone who came from a you know doesn't matter, but it, it changed her life and. The thing is that this is this is the this is the, what we talked about before T Wells. It's about how actually Ethereum projects, this label of empowering your community can actually be real, you know? And I feel that with the back and forth, we could be better, it could be worse, whatever uh, process that DNS is doing, they are actually, I feel, trying to achieve this process of empowering their communities. And the airdrop was the first part of um of that, of empowering your community. And it's not symbolic at all. I see my friend who, you know, 800 ENS, it's a lot. And she she empowered herself and now she uh, it will empower other people. So I feel this is something very interesting and in how uh, this dynamic works and how actually um, you can empower your community. And I feel that they have done it with the airdrop and the ENS token. And now they are trying to do that by governance. And it's a very interesting process. Um, so basically, the votation ends today. Um, by by what it looks, it will uh, finish positively uh, for them because the quorum seems to be accomplished. Uh, but yeah, we will see. Do you have any other comment regarding the ENS uh, process? Yeah. Uh, after ENS, we have um, the Uniswap. They basically, it's a very simple, it's a very simple proposal. It ended on November 25th. Uh, it lasted three days and it was basically uh, the Polygon team submitting a proposal to deploy Uniswap V3 to Polygon PO's uh, chain. Um, and then they explain a little bit of the reasoning, um, like, you know, Polygon POS has the strongest, has the second strongest DeFi ecosystem, right, after Ethereum L1. Um, they are also willing to incentivize Uniswap adoption financially and otherwise. Um, and Polygon is aligned with Ethereum and its values. And it passed with 100% of votes in favor. So, you know, that was, there was no, there was no um, no problem on that proposal. It passed smoothly. So that's that's the one. It's a very simple one. Um, and then we have the Gitcoin one. Uh, okay. You know, the matching pool allocations for round twelve that ends today in a few hours. Actually, um, do you want me to comment on that? Sure. Yeah. Let's talk a little about Gitcoin. I I, I do. I want to just say one thing about the Uniswap side of things, which I sure. think is really interesting. Which is, you know, I mean, it's it's worth noting. This is sort of that, um, 
you know that uh, I guess that that blue chip right that has been on mainnet ever ever since and um, the decision to to move to uh, to this sort of side chain is is interesting I mean there, because I think for so long there is and, and it's worthwhile distinguishing between a side chain and a layer two right and I think for a long yeah. time um, folks probably in Uniswap and, and other um, you know these blue chips were were going to wait to see what happened on L2 so seeing that they're Seizing the day, as it were, with Polygon is cool. Um, this is just another one of those things I find interesting to see how different protocols handle this differently. And when you talk about Aave yeah. or Sushi, that really has tried to spread across chains as quickly as possible, but Uniswap hasn't. Um, they, I guess it's uh, it's good to be the king. <laughs> if you're Uniswap, you kind of just do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's go to Gitcoin, though, man. Here, I'll pull this one over. Um, yeah, tell us a little bit about Run 12. What are you thinking? Run 12, it ends in uh, around four hours. Um, and basically, they they made this TLDR, and it's a quite an interesting one. Uh, basically, Gitcoin has historically utilized uh, categories based on run types to determine uh, the matching pool allocations, because they base that on a percentage of the overall matching pool found during the ground rounds. Um, and then that ground round and the round 11, in the final event, uh, was mm-hmm. questioned by Vitaly. Um, and then the argument being that quadratic funding should be just as effective during grand rounds using no categories. So the the public goods uh, work stream wanted to test Vitalik uh, theory and they proposed three options. Uh, the first option is a single pool experiment uh, using basically this round as a test. Um, so the main pool will be a single matching pool fund distribution of 1 million in a matching for the round. Um, no individual grants matching contribution shall excel 2.5% of the overall matching pool fund. Then they have the second option, which is no experiment, basically stick to the same. And uh, round three, and the option three, sorry, which will be do a 50 50, you know, uh, run a 50% of the matching pool as a single pool experiment and the 50 rest as the category base as before and basically you can see clearly i mean um besides the percentage you can see clearly here that uh no experiment to leave it as it was what had zero approval um no one like it has 0.2 percent votes in favor so basically Bitcoin community do not want no experiment Basically, they want experimentation. They want to sort of test it out things. They and can't I think say no to Vitalik. <laughs> I'm sorry, continue. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, man. Sorry. And I don't know. I think it's 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 really interesting. Besides Vitalik's um, main point, I think it's really interesting to see that a community sort of align in this sense of let's experiment, let's try out new things, let's see if it works. You know, I think that's a good uh, temperature check on. A community as a whole, you know, they are very value aligned, or at least, um, yeah, aligned as a community. So basically, for the rest of the voting, um, seventy percent approval on a single pool experiment as Vitalik proposed, and then we have thirty percent vote in favor of fifty fifty. So for what it looks, um, it will go down with the single pool experimentation. Um, so it's interesting to see how that works. Yeah, I agree, man. I think this is super cool. I'm going to drop everybody uh, in chat. I'm going to drop a link to the Gitcoin forum. I'm going to try. Um, if you want to take a look at more detail here for round 12, um, you know, yeah. I, uh, one hive was able to, thanks to the efforts of Paul, uh, Paul too was able to raise some, some funds through, I think, uh, the previous round 11, um, and so it, again, I think it's just it, the experimentation is, is awesome, right? And receptivity to feedback and all of this. Um, it'll be really interesting, really interesting to see how this goes. And um, just of course, a shameless plug here: we have a trivia game with Gitcoin on Friday. So all y'all who are in the audience, thank you for coming and attending and providing some good feedback today. And on Friday, we get the chance to win some uh, honey and, and GTC. And uh, I know they're going to do some promo for uh, for their round 12 and I think David DYOR is going to be in the house to help uh, yeah. to help us understand a bit more yeah yeah actually and the good part is that for example they they place pros and cons mm-hmm. and on this and for example they they explained that the, the, the pros is that they, they gave to experiment a while 
while maintaining the category approach for half of the pool. This is on the option uh, three, the 50-50. Mm -hmm. And the cons is that having both uh, systems, the old and the new, it's more complex and potentially very confusing for grantees. So uh, they did the same with the other ones. Um, you know, uh, and the pros of the single pool experiment is that they basically they get to run a proper experiment and try out a new approach to funding. And the cons is that the experiment is as is an unknown, and versus there are there already trusted and try uh, categories process. So I don't know. I feel it's interesting. They were very clear. They were uh, you know very open about it. Um, I didn't see any shady, any weird, like, oh, I mis-explained this, you know, kind of vibe. Um, so we will see how ground, I mean, it's, it's, very, it's, a, it's a public experiment. We will see the results and there will be a bunch of projects uh, impacted with this decision uh, in ground 12. So I think we can in, I don't know, a month or two, uh, we can reach out to some of these projects and see, hey, um, do you feel it's different? Do you feel it went wrong? We can ask Bitcoin too. Like, how do you feel about this experiment? How did it go for you? And we can have a follow up for this news. I think that's a great idea, man. Well, yeah, we'll definitely check out and keep keep up keep everybody keep everybody up to date on Gitcoin round twelve. Um, before we go any further here, I just want to take a second and uh, and like give a shout out to everybody who is uh, who's on the stream with us because we have a lot of folks here today that. Are new. We've uh, we've had two streams so far. This is number three, and I just want I'm gonna go down the list and give everybody a shout out. So here, I'm apologizing in advance if I butcher your name. Please just set me straight. But we'll go down here. So welcome to everybody. Ox Billy, um, Alt Toe. There it is. Atum One. Here, check it out. I'm putting on my glasses. Okay. Balthazar mm -hmm. with a million R's. Biker SC Two. Commander Root. Devourer Sixty Six. Double Double Blade D One. D W. One Two Three Four Five Six. Uh, let's see here. FF FFY4 I'm I'm I help I'm struggling guys sorry but fly or FFY welcome welcome to you um, Greg the Slayer Guinness man I share your your love for a good brew let's see uh, Harsh hello sir how are you Harsh glad you could join us um, Immover Mind John Angels Jungle Rush 01 Cax IPS Lindsay How's it going Hedgy uh, folks just so you know Lindsay will be joining us on uh, on the stream here in just a bit um Lies Kenor, oh, yes, Escanor, how are you? Uh, Miguel, I see you there. Welcome, good morning. Prez for best one, Rohek, hello, Solar, hello. I saw Dosh on here a second ago. Uh, Vanish Heya and Wackies uh, one Welcome to everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to drop your ETH address if you want to qualify for the NFB's airdrop. I'll explain a little bit more about it. Essentially, if we have all of them at the end, we're going to randomize them and choose one, and then Billy Jitsu will... Uh, explain to you what that means probably next Monday you're gonna get a cool PFP NFP when the project launches okay so welcome to everybody Eduardo what do you want to talk about next my man we have Ave and Mr. welcome Ave. to everyone and thank you for joining it's nice to see the uh, this community growing uh, oh you went back to the classes why why do you what why do you go back to the classes oh no I take them off there you go <laughs> I just had to read the names <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that's funny. Um, sorry, everyone. Um, a little impromptu. So basically, Ave, Ave uh, has some quite interesting proposals. Uh, we have two that are quite similar. Um, basically, we had the one that explains that um, the tackle the spam that they mm -hmm. that they were having. Remember, uh, we talked a little bit about that on the previous um, on the previous stream and was basically the snapshot became a spam shot. So a lot of organization <laughs> uh, had a lot of uh, kudos to Shui for coining that uh, phrase, a spam shot. Um, <laughs> a lot of communities had a lot of spam, a lot of weird questions, a lot of not related community, not related to governance at all. So, you know, uh, that's good on that sense. So basically, they proposed to raise a minimum AVE holding to create a snapshot proposal to 50 AVE. Um, that's one. And the other one is add AVE and add AVE to an avalanche voting power on a snapshot. Um, both uh, passed, um, and they used around uh, 20K AVE 
um, token hold uh, tokens uh, were voted on this. And yeah, the explanation is by itself uh, because uh, for people to know, before this proposal passed, the minimum required to create a snapshot proposal was one of it, you know, and that's very simple. So now they move on to 50. And yeah, so it passed with 99.3%. Uh, and almost no abstentions and almost um, no's on that uh, sense. So yeah, that's, that's good for them. And they just put another one, um, which finalized in a day, which to use ENS as collateral. Yeah. Have you heard about that? Yeah, I just saw this one here. This is, yeah, it looks like it's got less than a day before like left I guess this is interesting what do you think yeah. man it's interesting and I don't know I feel that it's it could add a nice layer to ENS and to um, to the community to the other community I think I don't know I, I have this feeling that if you have arrived to these corners of the internet um, you probably if you are part of the community of Ave, you are probably also familiar with ENS you know this is kind of correlation um, or you at least are aware of it. So I think it could be interesting um, to see how these communities start using this as a collateral. And I don't know. I'm, I feel it's positive and it seems it's passing also, um, the proposal. It doesn't have a lot of um, tokens on it, only 2.40K. Uh, just to have a reference, mm -hmm, the proposals, mm -hmm. the, the snapshot uh, minimum, uh, for a voting spam had 20k uh, tokens and this one only had yeah. 2k so just to just to keep that perspective in mind uh, maybe that also speaks about the amount of people who are aware of the ENS uh, concept or the ENS token uh, and project but I don't know we will see how it develops uh, it seems it will pass though yeah, I don't. It'll be interesting to see what type of sort of uh, conviction it receives from Ave holders. I'm not sure yeah. what their like threshold to you know passing is in terms of the quantity that's required to be staked on something like this. Right. Um, but if you're looking to get into more details, they do have a link here to the post on the governance on their on their forum, um, and they have some listed for like the risk parameters, which I don't. Again, this is this quickly gets beyond my technical knowledge, but these don't seem to be much different than. I mean, maybe they are, so I shouldn't speak out of turn, but I don't think they're huge yeah, yeah. from other like liquidation thresholds for other collateral. But it's interesting, like um, adding collateral to a money market is, is obviously a non-trivial decision. So it's cool that this is, <laughs> ENS is sort of a part of these multiple DAO decisions here. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see how this how this uh, gets fleshed out. Again, on the, on the spam side, like if you, I, we talked this on the stream last week, but if anybody was checking out Snapshot, there were these multiple, multiple blue chip DAOs just got like 25 to 50 uh, random, you know, asking about, what was yeah. it, what was when it was like, uh, what is, something about Michael Jackson. There was random stuff yeah. up on their Snapshot. And so Nuclear. multiple, multiple DAOs have tried to raise the threshold to submitting a proposal. Yeah. yeah. So regarding the, the this part of this, you know, we can, if we can pass to Olympus, um, Olympus DAO. So in their case, it's interesting uh, for the spam control because they have sent a lot of uh, a lot of proposals for correcting the spam situation. They have prevent meaningless proposals. Um, they have only wallets with minimum one hundred OHM should be able to propose. They have um, you know, I had like three or four spam control kind of um, bless you, it was um, spam control um, proposal. So I don't know. It, it's I don't know if it's I cannot tell because of the of I don't know. I'm not familiar with the Olympus organization and in the sense of who are the team who usually propose governance decision. Uh, so I cannot tell if they come within the organization or it's just the empower user who actually decided to vote on this and um if we actually take a look at the amount of um tokens that are being used on these proposals um i'm get a moment because one ends on the 4th of december and that one has less than 5k uh token holders uh token, yeah token used and then in the other one they have 10k um so you know it seems that they have been, it's not a low, low quorum, but we still don't know which is the minimum quorum required. 
Um, I think there, that should be a good practices for a snapshot in general across the uh, the space to add the minimum required, like uh, the same way ENS added on on their on, on their constitution, and the same way they added now in the latest proposal. It could be nice for having this set of a you know frame uh, of transparency, and part of this frame of transparency could be to implement which is the minimum uh, quorum required and which is the minimum tokens that you required uh, from uh, from the holders. So I think this this is something that DAOs are learning with with us and uh, with the users. But I think it could be really interesting to sort of have this uh, consensus on what is needed to be public on a snapshot proposal. What are the mm -hmm. what are the things that we want to know so everyone can learn from each other? You know. Uh, we are not talking about oh we are disclosing private industrial information that is copyright no we are just closing transparency which is okay uh from the total amount of holders of token how many need to be put on this to be valid and how many uh quorum do you need yeah so i feel that that should be something interesting uh and i see it's nice whether it's uh um olympus governance or whether it's users it's interesting they tackle this uh, as soon as they saw it and the votations will end next week. So we will see, uh, I will take a look at their forum to see if they have sort of executed these proposals. Yeah, no, I, and this this most this latest one is kind of taking it to another level, right? Rather than setting a minimum threshold for doing it, now they're, <laughs> they wanna, uh, whatever, strike folks that have wasting time and which is obviously much yeah. harder like that's a qualitative threshold it's better to obviously set a, a minimum but it's also this yeah. sort of paradox of permissionless things right if you're really saying yeah. that there's no barrier then you know it's, it's just an interesting this is one of those sort of interesting um questions and, and how you balance that when you're trying to be as decentralized as possible um you know this is an interesting proposal what to see i mean anytime that you see these um you know, OIPs here are probably more formal Olympus improvement plans um, to add a, an asset whitelist here. Um, I haven't investigated this in depth here, but I think that uh, this is their list that they're looking to whitelist for Olympus. And then I think yeah. um, uh, there's probably a link at some, some well, it doesn't look though, but this is definitely something that's active on their forum um, being yeah. titled. So you can find the link here if you're Yeah, to and also I think, um, yeah, I think it's interesting. That I have to, I have to kind of um, idea of the community from Olympus. One is that they are really uh, interested in knowing the token will go high. So you see a bunch of uh, a bunch of snaps proposal asking if Alm will go high in the sky, and you have another bunch of them tackling uh, the spam. So. Uh, it, it's interesting this community whether it's for e economic interest and the price of the token or whether it's for uh the community health related proposals it's interesting that they it seems like a very participative community mm -hmm, it seems mm -hmm. like it's a very active community for good or for bad and that's really nice because you see that people care uh, the bottom line is that people care you know and that's good to know yeah community mm -hmm. good to have 100 percent, man um so we we should move on to uh, XDAI. All right, let's do it. You want to talk about XDAI? Yeah, let's talk about XDAI. What do, what do you want to start with on XDAI? Do you want to? I mean, are we, are we starting with the XDAI or are we doing Gnosis? <laughs> I guess it's this one <laughs> of the same, <laughs> right? Let me see. And this is something we talked before, uh, to us. It's quite interesting because um, we can see the tweets. Um, if I can find them. Uh, there were some tweets regarding uh, XDA Shane. Sorry for that sound. XDA posted this tweet a few hours ago. Uh, sorry, a few days ago on November 25th. And they explained that uh, on Monday 29, stakeholders will have a week to cast their vote to show if they want to have their token merged with Gnosis token. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the interesting thing is that they, for, for discussion and uh, for the forum post, they didn't post or they didn't link back to their own forum. They linked to the Gnosis forum. So what is interesting from this is like, sorry, excited people, but it seems like you're assuming the merge is gonna happen uh, because you're already posting it on the Gnosis side, you know? Um, so anyways, um, they posted that on the Gnosis. Um, is it on the on forum? The on the forum, correct. Okay, on the Gnosis forum. let's see if we can find that. Um, 
my my guess is that they haven't uploaded yet to the snapshot um because it says it will be from the 29 which is today and i don't see anything in both uh in both snapshot places so i don't know we will see how that goes um nevertheless it's interesting it's it's nice to keep track from last time there is um they already closed the rotation you know uh, 11 days ago which it ended up being 33 percent in left to this and 37 percent on make no changes uh they have done a bunch of ama and so on so it seems that today um uh, we will know a little bit more about this um so let we we have to keep to keep track of this because this is essential for our DAOs. So I'm just curious to know um, how it will go. Um, if you go to the XA XI, sorry, uh, Twitter, they haven't posted much uh, later after that one. So now, things are being uh, work on the. Is there a link? Is this? I, I just want to be clear. Make sure I'm showing the right screen here. Um, is there? It is the link on the XDI forum to like this GIP 16 Gnosis chain merge merger thread or is there a separate uh, page that I should be on? No, no, it's a GP 16. That's the one they link. Okay. That's the one they put uh, to talk about uh, in the tweet about November 29th. Right. Uh, so it would be nice to have an update if they if they keep the timeline. If they, if they will work on more consensus. If anyone on the stream knows more about this and can provide feedback regarding any update that they have in the inside, that could be fun. Uh, but so far, yeah. So um, supposedly they will start the votation for the merge and it will have a week. But uh, that was post five days ago. So we still don't know if that timeline keeps uh, being intact. Yeah, I, I, so we know that, again, for everybody today, my understanding, too, is that I, I think Luigi announced this. If you if you have XDI staked as collateral in Agave, my understanding is you can vote with that as well. So I guess what we want to probably direct people then, and I'm going to look to the chat here. So, folks, I know some people in the chat who have been who are live with us know quite a bit about this and are following this merger. So we want to make sure we're directing people to the right space. Is it correct, I think, that people should be watching the Gnosis snapshot um, or should they be watching the XDI snapshot, which is which is better? Um, it seems like Gnosis is the answer, Eduardo, but I'm going to keep an eye on chat. I'm not sure if people have a, some thoughts on that. Um, let me see. Because I don't see it. I see today is the date, but I don't see anything up on either of their snapshots yeah. right now. So we'll just have to keep an eye. Um, yeah, that's why, that's why I mentioned, like, I think they... If they don't put it today, they will have to announce a new timeline. So we will keep updated on that because I think it could be interesting to know what is a new timeline, if there is a new timeline. And then uh, if not, if they are working on a consensus from their forum posts and the AMAs and all these activities that they did uh, in order to receive feedback. Because they did they did work on their feedback. They did their sessions, they they you know, they opened spaces to dialogue. It was not this imposed thing. I just you know, found it funny um, the way they are sort of using one snapshot and then the forum post of the other one. So it's just, yeah, mm -hmm. no one has a recipe for this. So we will see how that goes. We'll have to see. I, I've heard, yeah, I, I've heard things through the grapevine that the deal may be sweetened for stakeholders. We'll have to see. Um, yeah. So I think, again, the idea is if you're a stakeholder or you're somebody who wants to just sort of cast your vote in this merger yeah. uh, between Gnosis and XDI, keep an eye on Snapshot. Um, and uh, I'm fairly certain either, again, that it's either going to be the Gnosis or the XDI uh, Snapshot page where you'll be able to, to wow. vote on this. I think there's specific yeah. tweaks that they've made to it, right, in terms of the rate that stakeholders will receive, et cetera. Um, so yeah. again, if anybody, in, if anybody on the stream has other insights to share on this, please don't hesitate to, uh, to drop in there. Eduardo, what do you think, man? Oh no, that of course. Um, if not, uh, we will have probably some comment on next week uh, regarding this process. So that's cool. for sure. So keep tuned next Monday. Sounds good, man. All right. And that's all we got for today. Headlines. Um, I think it's very interesting. I mean, if you see it from a broader perspective, um, you can see these changes that are structural happening on. You know, we are we are passing the conversation of uh, from a technical conversation that people tend to have to a more related 
human-centered governance decision-making processes that are taking over the DAO space. And you can see how then um, consensus is being looked for. And it's interesting the mechanisms of consensus that people are aiming to. Uh, Gnosis just funded the governance reward system, mm -hmm. uh, governance research on reward system and governance. Uh, so, you know, things are moving to a direction that it's, before I felt that the ecosystem was very technical driven and very technical decision making focused. And now we are seeing this, uh, these other options for people, uh, you know, and, and decision making and cultural decisions uh, and governance decisions. So I think this is, this is a space trying to adapt and trying to evolve and trying to escalate. And I feel this, this, this time it's key to be part of this space because you know, it's when, it's when the changes and the people committed to the changes and people committed to their communities, uh, it's, a, it's going to pay off. This is not financial advance. This is just a comment. Yeah, no, 100%. And that bears repeating, right? Obviously, nothing we're suggesting here is financial advice, but we're just trying to share a bit about what's happening around the DAO space. Um, I'm sharing on screen the, the uh, Governance uh, GIP 15 we talked a little about last week. I think, yeah, this is really interesting. Um, we have a lot of new folks here. Do you want to talk through this just briefly as far as the governance? Uh, I have it on screen, you know, if, whatever you'd like to share. What, what, what is unique about this, do you think? Um, governance, what is interesting is that they are trying to tackle a uh, reward system. I mean, one of the, we have, we have outline and different people have different perspective about what are the key things in that space to be tackled, what are the key issues or more, no, let's not talk about issues, more complicated situations that needs to be tackled like onboarding how do you retain people and how reward people how do you reward contributors in a in a regular basis you know and how you keep track of them and how you keep you know how you relate that to governance so the Go governance is an is initiative um from different from different uh came from different aspects but um basically the the, the author of this is uh, angela kitten waste which comes from talking academy uh, I, a place that has been researching and a place that a community has been researching and a community has been uh, pushing education forward uh, with courses on, on talking engineering and so on. So their ner the next step is the governance, which is a cross community effort uh, that was funded by Gnosis and a bunch of other uh, communities. They apply to different funds, Gnosis is one, one of them. And the idea is that, okay, we have a bunch of 20 to 40 researchers that will go into real case uh, scenarios, you know, real DAOs that are having either have a, a reward system in place, uh, like for example, TEC have the praise system. Um, other communities have a manual basis reward system or a simple spreadsheet reward system, and all these are valid. And all of these are different, are in place in different circumstances, and whether they work better or or less. They are use cases that they are trying to research and come out with different uh, results um, and see how it goes. So, the, so it's you can actually, I mean, they do not they close uh, appliances, so you cannot be part of the research group anymore. But you can take a look at their open sessions. You can find them on Twitter by Governance. Um, they have a Twitter where they post most of the things, and I don't know. I feel it's really interesting, and we will see how that goes on the line. Absolutely, yeah. I think that this kind of thing will probably be replicated, um, you know, by different DAOs yeah. in the future. And I think the Governance is a really cool, really cool group there. Uh, and obviously, as we, you know, whatever they're discovering is also like an in-house almost R and D, right? Because they're yeah. going to provide some feedback that, like, um, sort of report their findings more or less in, in a way that helps to refine and improve their, you know, the Gnosis Zodiac uh, yeah. DAO, the modular DAO. Uh, app that they have or apps I guess that they have um, yeah which is really cool too yeah so um, check out uh, more on the governance they have a, a page on Twitter I'm not gonna open too many tabs here for fear of crashing <laughs> <laughs> but our increasing latency but um, I want to actually just pause too it looks like solar has uh, has chimed in in chat here so um, back to the the X diagnosis merge right the vote yeah. will be today it will be on the X die snapshot and it should be announced a little bit later. So if you find the XDI, follow the XDI chain um, on Twitter or you're in their Discord, you should you should get a, a notification when that goes live. It will be on the XDI snapshot. So that's good to know. Um, you keep that bookmark for the day. Um, yeah. 
Once and again, you don't, yeah. go ahead, man. You don't market. We will get. We will talk about it next week. We will make it easy for you. You don't have to read that much. Sounds good, man. Well. So that's the stories we got. I want to open the floor. Let's see here if we could check chat. If you have any questions for us, ideas, things you want to add, we can maybe open the floor for a few minutes here. What do you think, Eduardo? Yeah, or if you like my background, or if you want to see more of my background, I don't know. You know. <laughs> can you take, how far Whatever from the beach is. are you? Are, are, is the beach like just a stone's throw there? Yeah, it's like five minutes. Okay, nice, man. I'm jealous. There's, sure. you know, there's <laughs> Panama, Panama is so small that you have the river next to the ocean. So um, I have a river, two minutes walk, and then I have uh, the ocean also. The Pacific Ocean, just to, for people curious about it, is the Pacific Ocean. Uh, this is the coast next to Panama City, the capital of Panama. We, we were not very, um, we didn't think too much about the capital city name. So it stays the name, it stays the same. And it's a, it's a really nice place. So anyways, is there any question for us today? Let's see here. I'll let people chime in if they got it. In the meantime, I see some people asking about the airdrop here. So just to, to clarify again, um, there is a project called NFBs, um, and it will be launched in the coming weeks. It's being built by One Hive contributors. And um, each Monday stream, if you come, you drop your ETH address, um, then we will randomize, we'll randomly select. So when the show's over, I'm going to take the ETH addresses, we'll randomize them and choose one. And I think we'll probably announce it on Twitter. Um, like if, if you, um, let me put it this way, yeah, I will have your handle here on Twitch, okay? Um, but if you have a different handle like on Discord, just add that in and I'll be able to find it um, just so we know how to reach out to you if you win. Um, of course, we'll, we'll probably announce it before next Monday, but um, the drop will not happen for a couple weeks. So basically we're gonna add the winning address to the white list or to the airdrop list of addresses. Um, right. And then so when the airdrop happens, you'll receive it, but you're not gonna claim it. It will happen, it'll be dropped to your wallet um, when the project goes live. So, yes, oh, it's Billy's got it. I, I, I'm not sure if that's Billy Jitsu. Billy, if that's you, hello. If it's not, <laughs> hello too. <laughs> But I appreciate the folks helping uh, in chat to, to sort some of that stuff out. Um, yeah. Soon, 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 Harsh, TM. Okay. Um, but let's see here. If anybody else has any questions or comments, um, we'll take another three minutes. We'll sort of open the floor here. And then at 10 of, we're going to pause, have a little intermission, and then I'm going to, we're going to, uh, wish Eduardo a good day and then we'll I'm going to bring on the hedgy folks here at the top of the hour so you got a couple minutes again if you want to ask some questions here um, I know we got folks from all over the world if you're in the US belated uh, happy Thanksgiving hope everybody had a good long weekend happy um, anybody doing do you, do you want to explain do you want to explain to before the, the pause to people what edgy phone is going to talk about today yeah absolutely um, so Hedgy Finance, if you haven't, um, if you haven't heard of them, if you're in One Hive, you've definitely heard of them. If you're new, if you haven't heard of Hedgy Finance, go to their website hedgy.finance, um, and they offer some really cool tech to for crypto options trading. And the way that uh, Hedgy intersects with One Hive is that we've had a partnership going back a couple months now, where they have helped One Hive to set up. Uh, call options on Honey. That the big picture here is, even if you don't know anything or have any interest in uh, in options trading, um, they have helped One Hive develop a strategy to build a stable coin reserve for its treasury. Um, so that's a big deal. I think there's a lot of DAOs that are looking for this. Um, you know, who knows? I I, I I hope as much as everybody else that uh, we're going to go see 100k in Bitcoin <laughs> tomorrow. Like, great. <laughs> But you always want to you always want to hedge, right? So in case of uh, market downturn, uh, I think DAOs that have a, a solid stablecoin reserve are going to fare. They'll be able yeah. to weather uh, more storms, as it were. So we're really excited to be chatting. And uh, Hedgy's also got some new uh, some new things to share, not only about our partnership with their partnership with One Hive, but also about their their product offering. And so we'll be talking with with uh, Lindsay and Alex. Nice. So. I think that will be all for today. That sounds good. Um, it's always great to have you, Eduardo. Thanks, man, for the awesome headlines. And uh, thank you for having me. Too. Of course. Have a good and, rest of your day. I, I wish the best of luck to everyone who is going to participate in the airdrop. And enjoy your day.
See you later. Cheers, everybody. We'll be back in about 10 minutes. All right.